today on Living by Faith. Say words are image, image containers. containers. So when you hear words, you see something. See what I'm saying? So words have been designed to cause you to see things that will ultimately now translate themselves into a voice where you can see what somebody is saying. Because if you don't see what they are saying, you will never hear anything. Who you hear from, you will soon become like. I want you to remember that. It is important that you are hearing the right things. The scripture says, take heed what you hear and take heed how you hear it. In this lesson, I'll teach you about the importance of hearing. It has caused increase and in promotion in my life, in my marriage, in, in, in my finances, because I've heard the right things. The Bible says that the sheep will always know the shepherd's voice and the stranger they will not follow. But that is contingent upon your hearing. And you need to hear the right things. Get this lesson. It will bless you. Order this three-disc series on DVD for a gift of $45 or more or on CD for $23 or more. Call 1-888-630-4540. Let's join Pastor Freeman for the message already in progress. And go over there to Mark chapter number four. Cause it just absolutely blows me away when you have said something to someone with no ill intent connected to what you have said and they heard something entirely different. Have you ever wondered, how'd you get that? Husbands and wives are notorious for it. What you mean by that? I would tell this one. <laughs> Baby, go get your hair fixed. Why don't you go, why don't you, you should go get your hair fixed today. Let me, let me see how I can say that even nicer. Sweetie, why don't you treat yourself to a hairdo? I could have said a little nicer than that, couldn't I? Uh, help me out. Baby, honey, here's some money. <laughs> That's worse. See, huh? Ron, help her brother out. Uh, baby, um, how about you get your hair done today? So we can go out and have a good time. We can't have a good time the way I look right this ghetto, I mean, this girl, <laughs> you can take a chick out the southeast area, but you can't get the southeast out of her. This girl, this, this long time, baby, uh, why don't you go get, you, what, what you trying to say about my hair? I don't care how you say it, because based upon the environment, the community, the associates, and previous teachers, that's been around an individual, their hearing has been shaped by all of those other factors. And you can have the most purest of intents when you are saying something to someone who feels like they've been victimized over a certain period of time, or they have just come up in an environment where they were put down about their hair, or their skin color, or their weight. And you may say something like, uh, can I treat you to eat? Do I look like I need to eat? I didn't even mean it. Come on, somebody please help me out. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have said something. And because of how they have heard it. Now, look at, look at Mark chapter number four, and let me show you something. Look at verse number 23. Because we got to set this up before we can go any further. I can see that. Verse 23, if you have it, say, I have it. I have Check your neighbor, make sure they have it. Say, move your arm, let me see. Bust them out, set them free. They may be in Malachi trying to fake you out. What chapter I say? Four. Chapter 4, verse 23. You cannot be connected to U-Vision at this time. 
<laughs> okay, let's see if we can find another Bible. Okay, where, where did I say? Mark? I had this problem when I was turning pages. You cannot be connected to the Bible at this. Okay. Verse 23. Listen to this. If anyone has ears to hear, what else do you have them for? Let him what? If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And we're going to define this. We're going to just talk about this a little more. Verse 24. Then he said to them, watch this, take heed what you hear. Because words are seeds. Say that. Words are seeds. And everything in life has begun, God set it up this way, in seed form. So things you hear, they come at you by way of seed. And when seed is planted, it has the ability to make a demand on what it sets in. You sit, you sit a seed in ground, the seed will then make a demand on the ground to cause it to produce. You put a seed in a man's heart, that seed will make a demand on that man's heart to produce what that seed has in it. So the Bible says, take heed to what you hear. You have heard something that has either caused you to go in a direction towards God or in a direction away from God. But it started in seed form. You really did not know that you were setting a course for your life based upon what you heard when that seed got into you. That's why it's important to guard your ear gate because something can get in your heart by way of what you heard that can start a process that begins with the seed. And while you're sleeping, day and night, the scriptures say, it grows up and we know not how. And now you're producing a word that you heard that you were never supposed to hear. And you're conducting the affairs of your life based upon something you heard that God never intended for you to hear, but that seed got in and it should have never gotten in. Hunt your neighbor said, take heed what you hear, little buddy. He says, on, Jesus was speaking here, he says, with the same measure you use in your hearing, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, watch this, more will be given. More of the worst or more of the best. Verse 25, for whoever has, to him more will be given. Oh, I like that. And you can have without having manifestation of what you have. And you won't have it until you get in the right environment where that environment starts making the demand on the seed. You didn't even know you were capable of committing fornication, but you got in that environment which made a demand on the seed from the stuff you were listening to prior to getting in, in, in the environment, and now you're fornicating and wondering why. Look at your neighbor and say, it wouldn't be a good time to look down now. <laughs> How did a little boy now want to be a little girl? Something he heard. And it came in seed form. And now he yields himself to that kind of environment, and that seed now is making the demand from the environment, and this thing is growing up in him. Instead of walking like he's supposed to walk, now he's walking differently. Go to Luke chapter number 8. I'm preaching good today, boy. I'm having a ball, but I'm setting you up. I'm setting you up to get blessed. Because success is not an event. It is, it is an on-purpose progress of increase that will cause you to be transformed into the kingdom of God's dear son. And a lot of it has to deal with how you hear things. Now, you got Luke? 
Did I say chapter number 8? Okay, look at verse number 18. Now, over in Mark 4, we see in verse 24, Jesus saying, take heed what you hear. Now, we see over in Luke, he say, verse number 18, come on, read it with me. Ready, read. Take heed how you what? Go on, read on. Uh-huh. And whatsoever he what? Seems to have, it will be taken from him. Okay? Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Our lives and the relationships and ministries and the successes, whether it be business, are greatly impacted by the development of your hearing. And there are some subjects that you are just so sensitive about that you can't even go over there anymore because you can't even stand to hear anything about that subject. When someone has been wounded or, or hurt in the past or be betrayed, any sign or any mentioning of betrayal activates again all of the pain and you would rather want to stay away from it than to deal with it. The Bible says, not only take heed to what you hear, but take heed to how you hear it. And you're going to have this measure given to you based upon how and what you hear. You're going to be able to get out of a situation or go deeper into the situation based upon how you hear. Now, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 Verse 7 said, very familiar scripture, but I want you to look at it and please read it. Ready, read. Okay, look at it. Read it again one more time for me, please. Ready, read. Okay, okay, okay. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, can you quote that without looking at it at this particular time? Can you quote it without? Uh, and this is not a play on your intelligence, but I want to make sure all of you all will participate. Okay, are you ready? Don't read it, just look up, ready, quote it. Come on, put a little, put a little volume and a little passion and a little excitement in it. You know, one of the greatest men in my estimation that uh, has pioneered, especially in the African-American community, this word of faith is uh, Dr. Frederick Casey Price. And at the end of all of his lesson, he would close it by saying, remember, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Dr. Price would say a little bit more excitement than that, you guys. Okay, one more time. Well, maybe, maybe one more time. Depending on how you do on this side, we may or may not have to do it again. How'd your name say, would you do it right for that man, please? See, you ain't listen to me, Elder Derek. I said, would you hunt your name and tell him, would you do it right for that man? You're right, okay, right. We'll be right back after these messages. I would say if you don't attend SOFBI, you are truly missing out. This is a missing piece to the puzzle for you that is really going to um, allow you to be efficient in the assignment that God has called you to do. This whole experience has really taught me not to just be a church goer, but to really find my place in the body of Christ. I know that my calling is to teach now, and I know that that is just as important as any other calling anyone else has and um, I've really been equipped to go out and, and teach and do what God has called me to do. When I moved out here in August, there was like one month to register, and it was a gentleman who was doing an interview like me, and I remember one thing he said. He said, are you gonna answer the call? And so I submit to you, somebody who's watching this right now, are you gonna be the one to answer the call? Every time I leave my home, my wife wants to know where I'm going. Chris, check this out. In my house, everybody knows where everybody goes. Man, that's interesting.
interesting. Where you get that from? Oh man, it's a book I've been reading by Dr. Michael A. Freeman. What's up? Introducing the much-awaited publication of Dr. Mike Freeman entitled Marriage Made Easy in 31 Days. Written as a 31-day devotional, this book is an easy read for even the busiest couples. Man, I knew you weren't that smart. Hey, they got anything in there about a motor my wife? I mean, look at her, man. She's probably in there running her mouth right now. <laughs> Marriage Made Easy in 31 Days addresses points such as communication, household guidelines, and visions for your home. This book will direct you through setting up order in your relationship. It's also a great gift for family and friends. For the price shown on the screen, you can get this book today. Give us a call at 1-888-630-4540. You can't leave here thinking I meant something. You got to know exactly what I said in order to get the results that I'm sharing. And this exchange is greatly impacted by your perception of the speaker. Oh, I wish y'all would say amen to something. Whatever you perceive about someone who's telling you anything will greatly affect the outcome. Because if you don't respect who you are listening to, you will never gather anything from them. I don't care if they're telling you the truth, you're not going to receive it because your perception has warped the, the whole exchange because you don't think very much of me. So if we're going to gain from this exchange, your perception is going to have to be proper. Now, Words are image containers. <laughs> are, you, are you learning and, and really paying? Because you kind of got this blank lip look like a, a deer caught in the head, like, like a cow. <laughs> when they say, when, looking at a new gate. When they put that there, <laughs> say words. words. Are, are image, image containers. containers. So when you hear words, you see something. See what I'm saying? So words have been designed to cause you to see things that will ultimately now translate themselves into a voice where you can see what somebody is saying. Because if you don't see what they are saying, you will never hear anything. And I'm going to bring to your attention some of the considerations that's been going over in my heart. Whereas maybe we haven't taken advantage of all the scripture revelation concerning 5 and 7 of 2 Corinthians. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, second, I am so rushing. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 verse 18. Look at that. Because, no, look up, look up, look up. <laughs> because you and I have been placed at a disadvantage as believers. We've been asked to trust something that we cannot see. <laughs> All suck it now. <laughs> Shaka Khan. <laughs> Mama Ku <Kou> Mama Sa. <laughs> Barack Obama. <laughs> We've been asked to trust something. Okay, okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Look at verse 18. Wow. Is that what it starts off with? While we look not at the things. Now you put me at a disadvantage because I'm used to seeing things to help me make decisions about things. So he says, we walk by faith and not by what we see. While we look not at the things that we can see, but the things that we... How do you look at stuff you can't see? Okay, we're going to deal with this. For the things that we see are... And the things that we cannot see are eternal. So we need eyes into in another arena. 
that will allow for us to make decisions that we need to make in life. In this earth, we know we make physical contact with this earth's uh, connections, and maybe I'm not presenting that right, but we have been given five physical senses. Uh, hearing, smelling, seeing, tasting, and touching, right? Did I get all of them? I said, did I get all of them? And people who have any kind of impairments relative to these senses, the other senses have seemingly been heightened where well, it can make up for the deficit of whatever senses that they are short of. Is this making any sense? Yes. Okay, so like when a man cannot see physically, did you see that movie, The Book of Eli? Yes. Tell the truth, you in church. Yes. I ain't talking about seeing the movie. Oh. I ain't know that dude was blind. To the end. How many of y'all knew he was blind during the movie? During the movie. During the movie. I can't stand people like you. I knew all the time he was blind. I watched the movie and I saw something. You didn't see. Him. But all of his other senses, it, it, it's not like we don't possess the same. But because we have the five, we don't work on the other senses to the degree. See, because he had to rely on his hearing and touching and feeling and all of that kind of thing to cause the playing field to be level in life because he was sure of one of the senses. And because he was sure of one of the senses, all the other senses were heightened. <laughs> That's good stuff. So where... When you can't see like you need to see, other senses will come in and provide for you the ability to cause you to do things in life like, if you will, normal individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So as it relates to the kingdom of God, God saying, I got to take away from you the physical senses but I'm heightening for you other senses that will allow you to tap in something that you cannot see to do life better than those who can see. And y'all ain't gonna like me for this, but I'm out of time. <laughs> We're gonna pick this up next week. Same back channel. Give the Lord a shout, would you please? Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to get back here next week. Because, boy, you got to hear this. Okay, let me, let, me just, let me just present this to you. There are things that I've touched that have spoken to me. And as a result of my putting my hand on it, I've heard something. And faith has been developed by what I touch because that touch has had a voice. Okay, 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 you'll know this better this way. You ever tasted something that was so good, you said, now nah, that's saying something. <laughs> Come on. That stew didn't say a thing. But you put it in your mouth and it start registering words to you. I'm going to have another bowl of this. And see, that's what you shouldn't hear. <laughs> Look at your name and say, you can't afford another bowl. Stop hearing. And I've looked upon some things and it has generated my faith because it said something when I saw it. And I'm going to teach you how to take advantage of what you see in life, what you hear in life, what you taste in life, what you touch in life, that will cause an ability to come up on you 
to live life to its fullest. I jumped up on Dr. Frederick K.C. Price's aircraft, and when I sat down, that plane spoke to me. Animate and inanimate objects will form a voice and tell you what you can and cannot do in life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay, prove it, uh, Pastor. Jesus walked up to that tree. That tree said, you won't eat from it. And the Bible said, and Jesus answered it. You don't answer things that don't talk to you. You need to be behind the wall in a straitjacket. <laughs> no, if you go around answering stuff that ain't talking to you, like if I'm talking to you and he says, I'm fine, <laughs> we both gonna look at him like, am I talking to you? Your finances have told you what you can and cannot do, and you ain't talking back. Thank you for viewing today's broadcast. In this teaching series, Pastor Michael Freeman expounds on the importance of hearing. One of the things that has been a key to my progress is hearing properly. We learned that people have either achieved a level of success or failure based upon what they have done with what they have heard. We all been taught to talk or to say the right things right, but we have not been taught to be responsible for hearing it right. What you do with what you hear greatly affects the outcome of your life. And Jesus thought this to be most important. He said, because people are missing it, and they can't grow because how they have set themselves up to hear certain things. Order this three-disc series on DVD for a gift of $45 or more or on CD for $23 or more. Call 1-888-630-4540. Pastor Michael Freeman will be teaching at the following locations. Fick Witham Annual Convention at the Fick Witham National Convention on Tuesday, July 24th through Thursday, July 26th at the Faith Dome with Apostle Frederick Casey Price in Los Angeles, California. Service starts at 10 a.m. on Wednesday and Thursday and 7 p.m. nightly. Word of God Fellowship on Wednesday, August 9th at the Expanding Your Vision Conference 2012 at Word of God Fellowship Church with Pastor Frank Summerfield in Raleigh, North Carolina. Service starts at 7 p.m. On Friday, August 10th at Marriage Made Easy on the Road, Memphis, held at Breath of Life Christian Center with Pastor Sammy Holloway in Memphis, Tennessee. Dr. Dee Dee Freeman will minister with Dr. Freeman. Service starts at 7 p.m. Please contact us for more information 301-630-3733 or visit our website www.spiritoffaith.org The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of the Living by Faith broadcast.